Now let's get started with the compositor. Compositing networks live in the image network. There's a compositing network there by default. Let's rename it Glow and dive inside by double clicking. The viewer that goes with the compositor is of course the composite view. Well, the first thing we're going to do is bring in our different images. We do this using a file node, which we can get from the tab menu. We can then choose our sequence of normal files. As you can see, we now get the sequence displayed in the composite view. Let's take a brief digression on compositing nodes. There is, as usual, an output connector at the bottom. There can also be one or more input connectors at the top, though the file node doesn't have any. The connector at the side is the mask connector, and it's unique to the compositing network. It controls which areas of the image are affected by the operation of the node. Like other nodes, compositing nodes have flags. There is a display flag, which controls which node is shown in the composite view. As we will see, in a minute you can in fact view multiple nodes at once. Then there's a render flag, which is only used in sub-networks sub in the compositor to show which node is the final node in the, in the network. So unless you're using sub-networks, you don't need to worry about it. Then there's a template flag, which we also won't be using, but allows you to compare images. And finally, there's a bypass flag, which, as you might expect, disables the node. So anything coming into its input is passed straight to the output. Another feature of the compositor is that almost all nodes share some tabs in the parameter, parameter pane. We'll cover that later. So let's lay down another file node and get our sign render, and another one to get our mat render. We can in fact display all these nodes at once, by shift-clicking the display flags of each of them. Let's adjust the size of the views. Now we can play through on the play bar and see all of the images at once. Let's start creating our glow. We're going to use the alpha channel of our sign render for this. I'm going to right-click the output of the sign render and add a blur node, and then set the blur to something like 30. As you can see, the blur node has two additional tabs, the mask and the frame scope tab. These two tabs are available in almost all compositing nodes. The mask tab allows you to control how the mask Im input is used. We're not using a mask input here, but there is something useful on this tab, which is the plane scope parameter. This isn't in fact about the mask, but it lets you determine which channels will be affected by the operation. By channel here we mean red, green, blue and so on. The default is that all channels, red, green, blue and alpha, are affected by the operation. If we deselect red and blue, and now look at our image, we can see that the red, green and blue are not blurred, but alpha is. The frame scope tab controls which frames the operation takes place on. Again, we won't be using that in this tutorial. The default, which is what we want, is that the operation takes place on every frame. Just one further word on the mask tab. The drop box with the star in it is used to control uh, the effect of the operation on additional image planes. We don't have any additional image planes with these renders, so we won't be using it. So we're going to use this alpha channel as the basis of our glow but it's a bit too bright at the moment. I need to darken it down. I'm going to add a color correct node to the blur. On the multiply master parameter, we'll want to reduce the values down to something like 0.5. Let's put the display flag on this node and see what effect it's having on the alpha channel. It seems to be as bright as ever. There's a reason for this. If we check the mask tab of our color correct node, this node, by default, doesn't affect the alpha channel. So we need to deselect all the uh, other channels and select alpha.
The next thing we need to do is make sure that our glow is properly, properly obscured as the pillar moves across it. That's why we have our matte render. What we need to do is multiply the alpha channel from that render with our current alpha channel. Uh, thus, when the pillar is in the way, the alpha channel of the glow will be zero and it won't be compositive over the top. So we need a multiply node. We can now see if we play the sequence, the pillar is correctly obscuring the glow in the alpha channel. The next step is to create a color for our glow. We can use the tab menu to create a color node. I'm going to choose a light green color. If we display this node, we get a solid block of color. What we want, in fact, is to have color just where our glow is. So if I connect the output of the multiply node that contains uh, the alpha channel for our glow into the side of the color node, this creates a mask and we now have only have color only where the glow is. The final thing we need to do is composite this over our background, which we've called the normal render. To do this we lay down a composite node and connect the color node to the foreground and the normal render to the background. Fortunately the default operation over is what we need. We can see that this is indeed what we wanted. There is a glow around the sign which is being correctly obscured by the pillar. We just need to render this out. To do this, we need a node called a ROP file output node. We can choose where to place the files. I'm going to render them again into the HIP directory and put them as final.dollf3.tiff. I've chosen TIFF uh, this time as it's a more interchangeable file format. Note that the frame tab lets you render a cropped image and the auxiliary tab lets you render out several files at once containing additional information such as depth. In this case we don't have any additional information. To activate the render you simply click the final flag as with an output node. One final remark before we leave the compositor. There is an option on the ROP file output node to reload all files. It's worth having this checked. By default, the compositor just reads in the input files once and then caches them. So if you were to redo one of your three renders here, you might not see the changes in the compositor. If it looks like something you've changed isn't showing up, then you can go into the file nodes and click Reload Sequence. That should fix the problem. That brings us to the end of this tutorial.